welcome to another Wargame review from theplayers8.com. My name's Alexander. And my name is Grant. And today, uh, we played Patton's Vanguard from Revolution Games. And this game covers the Battle of Aracourt, which is uh, in, I think it's the Lorraine province of France in 1944. And this is September, so this is post D-Day, a couple months down the line. Um, so this game was made by Revolution Games. And it's designed by Mike Ranella. Um, it uses an area impulse system. I know he's done another game that Revolution put out called Last Battle Iyashima. And it's a similar type of area impulse game you'd see in things like um, Breakout Normandy, um, like the Thunder Over Casino, those kind of games, I believe. They use an area impulse style. Um, so this game comes in a poly bag. Um, the map's 20, 22 by 17, I believe. Yes. And so it's it's not overly large. Um, you can kind of see it here. It's a fairly small map. It has about 15 areas, give or take maybe 20. 38, I think. 38. That, there we go. They count. They count. It's there nice. You go. They're numbered. Um, and this is basically the battle is a German counterattack against Patton's Vanguard. Um, so you've, you've got kind of American, well, yeah, the American forces uh, kind of, they're kind of making a big advance and they're kind of they're in the city of Aracor and there's like surrounding hills and forests and there was a huge well in the game stacks but there's large panzer divisions and there's a lot of German armor making a counter-attack trying to kind of push them out of this town cut some supply lines and drive them back in this particular area so the game itself is four turns long and each turn is made up of a series of impulses. And the impulses, at minimum, you'd get probably five or six. You'd be unlikely to get less than that. And at maximum, you're going to get 12. So that varies. So the game length can, can go from, you know, a, an hour, hour and a half, if you had shorter impulses or someone got crushed, to if you dragged out the full, if you had 12 impulses for four turns, yeah, it might be, it might be a two-hour game. But I don't know that that would ever happen. No, it's very unlikely to happen <laughs> yeah. that way. Um, so the game's not a particularly long one. Um, and it's not, not overly complex either. No, no. It's actually a very accessible war game. And it's accessible in the sense that the system is not difficult to learn. You know, you're not staring at a big hex overlay where you kind of... The minutia of the, of the kind of the tactical terrain isn't that big of a deal. The map's divided up into these large areas... Wow. And each kind of area just has a number, and that's the terrain modifier for that area. You don't have to worry about whether it's woods or whether it's kind of a road or anything like that. You just say it's plus two when I attack. When I attack you, the defender gets that plus two. That's yeah. what it is. So it's very simple to see the modifiers and, and to do that. And you basically just have stacks, and you're moving around on the board, taking control of areas. And the Germans, the onus is on them to go and do a big attack and take the areas on the eastern side of the board. To gain VPs, so that's that's really it. The game isn't uh, massively complex. I think there's two scenarios. Yep. The latest scenario um, has a lot of more different Allied units and a, a two two different um, other German divisions as well. It's kind of the second part of the battle. I, I don't know if it's them. I think those are more reinforcements that came in a few days later. Yes. So from my standpoint, the game was interesting. I played as the allies just kind of hang on for dear life waiting for reinforcements to come and grant played as a german just kind of a big wave of tanks trying to smash everything off the board um i had uh it was the game plays very differently to a lot of games we played i think this is the first area impulse game that we've played yeah i, I think so i have it's i been, have at least with these types of rules yeah i've not i actually have um Iyashima. the Iyashima, their other game i just haven't played it yet much to my shame <laughs> You've had it for a year now, I think. Yeah, I know. At least. But it was very, very interesting to actually like play it. Really simple, really fun, quite yeah. easy to learn. So what's some things that you enjoy about the game? Um, once again, I, I believe I would categorize this as an introductory level war game. So the combat factors are very simple to calculate. You're not using a CRT with odds-based attacks. You're literally adding up your attack factors and then your defense factors modifying that by terrain. There's also some other interesting modifiers. For instance, if your attack force can, uh, involves one of each of four different types of units, artillery, infantry, engineers, and armor, 
So if you can get three of any one of those four types in a battle, you get an extra modifier. So it's a very simple combat system. It also doesn't have zones of control, but it has kind of a modified zone of control element where areas that you move into that are adjacent to enemy controlled areas, yeah. you add your movement, you add, it takes more movement points. I thought that was a neat way to really address kind of the same the same element. Yeah, you get the same element in a very simple rule. Right. I think that made it more simple to understand the zone of control. Yeah. So I, that's why I say this is more introductory. Um, very interesting game. As Alexander mentioned, as the Germans, that first round, I kind of ran roughshod yes. over the entire, this, uh, this side of the map. I think I picked up eight out of 10 required VPs and was literally a couple of moves away from ending the game early. But the design is such that that's very, very tough to do. Yeah. A good player can get in that position and then someone who's defending can very easily take that away just by moving a, a force here or, or there. Um, so, so simplified elements, I think, that worked well together. I liked the units. I thought they were different, different types of units. I, I think the... The differences, the asymmetry in the American tanks or armor versus the German armor was was very interesting. We were having a conversation. I think in a lot of war games, typically German armor is modeled as there's a lot of them with fairly even keeled attack values and defense values where I've seen a lot more American units. There's fewer of them, but they tend to have a better punch. And I think in this game that that's the way they decided to model that. Yeah, and I thought that was that was part of the design that I thought was really cool. Yeah. So the the basically the German armor, you'll have a stack of five tanks, and they will have like a four attack. Yeah, four power. four. So yeah. you can attack with a four and get a plus one modifier for each of the other ones. So you can make a good attack out of it, and they'll be attacking. So for here we have like a Sherman unit. One single counter has a seven attack value. Now the difference there is is when those guys attack each other. If the Germans take a wound, now they can take a loss. Mm -hmm. Whereas the, when the Americans take a loss... It hurts. That's their only, they have fewer, that only counter. They have fewer and attacks. And then, and then they're kind of hosed. Where, yeah. Whereas I, I think, and I think that ability to take more hits on the German armor is very interesting. And I think that's where some of the cool design elements yeah. come out of. So while that can be very difficult as the attacking Germans, I definitely understand the benefit of that in the design and the reason or the choice... For that, so I thought that was that was pretty cool. Um, this game is about supply because in order to win, you've got to be able to trace through certain hexes, and if you can't do that, you can't win. So that was interesting. I thought, especially the auto win. Yeah, uh, for the auto win, you had to have not only this particular area, but, but you had to be able to trace supply through a very specific other area, and that was neat. Because they're like, no, you have to set it up like historically so that these things can happen right. for you to like win-win. Because you cut off basically enemy reinforcements is what would have happened. Yeah. And, and I think that was really cool as a very, you know, just an interesting victory condition that was historical. You bring some of that learning into the yeah. game as well. Well, and I also like that too because once again, the disparity in the units after the first turn made it very difficult for me to have a hope of actually winning by controlling all 10 victory points. So I had to start kind of thinking strategically, how can I get area 25 and then at the same time control area 8? Yeah. And it, it made an interesting kind of tactical puzzle for me. And you solved that puzzle pretty, pretty well. You, you kind of gutted me right down the middle, which eliminated that option, <laughs> which was good. Um, I like games that have those kinds of elements because, once again, it's not just about lining up stacks of units Whoever rolls better wins. This is gives you a couple different options about who can win and how. And th what was interesting for me is with the combat, you you know you have all your attack factors that you can calculate, but then you roll two d six. And a lot of games you like you roll a d six and you add it to your combat values, or you consult a CRT. There's not a combat results table in this. You just you have your you know here's my values and I roll two and two d six. I thought was a very interesting design choice. Because that is a wild swing that you can oh, yeah. have. If somebody, somebody can roll two. Yeah. And uh, for like the whole first part of the game, we were both rolling 10s, 11s, 12s. It was crazy. It was insane. So we, you know, I'd have like a 22 combat value, and then he'd have a 21, and it would, 
you know, in certain situations yeah. it causes one loss. Or in other situations, it just bloodies, it, like, everyone takes a wound uh, in certain situations. But then there were other, there were times where, like, I'd roll, I rolled Snake Eyes one time, and then you rolled, like, an 8 or 9. And the difference between those two is, like, how many wounds or reductions. Uh, reductions. Yeah, and yeah, it's attrition points, so three attrition points eliminates a full strength unit, or one retreats a, a unit, that kind of thing. But you have to, you know, suddenly you're taking nine attrition points, like, oh my gosh. So the, the, the 2d6 is really interesting, mm -hmm. because combat was never a sure thing. You can have as no, many, never as at many all. modifiers as you want. I can have a 14 attack strength. If I roll two, and you have like a 10 attack strength, and you roll a 12, like, I'm hosed. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really interesting how wide the spectrum can be with the 2d6. Well, and I think, I think that element adds a lot of unpredictability to it, yeah. but it also evens the playing field a yes. little bit. You can make a, a risky attack. Yeah. And then you might like, it off. like at the end, I had, to just, I had to keep telling myself, Grant, in order for you to win this, you're going to have to attack Alexander's three stack here on a hill which had, I think, a, a modified 15. Yeah, something can say like that. My attack value was like an 11 or a 12, so I automatically, when we roll off, I'm three or four down. So I had to remind myself, Grant, you can roll boxcars, and Alexander can roll snake eyes, and you've effectively destroyed him. Now, ultimately, in the end, that didn't happen, but I like that element. That was an element of randomness that I thought added some risk and also minimize some risk as well. But also, what I what I thought was cool about the the two d six was it made it, it kept it grounded as a game. Yeah, but right. because of because of how swingy that can yeah. be, I'm like anything could happen. This is a game, yeah. right? Uh, it it kind of takes me out where I'm like, just enjoy playing a game right. with my friend. It doesn't have to yeah. be like I'm like. Freaking out, like, I'm gonna lose, and I'm yeah. a bad general, and all my guys are dead. Yeah. Roll, roll duty six and see what happens. Like, well, a lot of times so when fun. we... It's, I was like, I'm having fun. Yeah. Enjoy it. A, a lot of times when we play, and you look at the CRTs, you're, you're exactly right. I, certain attacks, I cannot do. I can't bring myself to do it, because I know it's like charging up a hill with a grape shot cannon, <laughs> as we observed in At Any Cost a couple of weeks ago, and it just was almost impossible to do anything. This, it boiled down to a game. Yeah, you got to mitigate yeah, go You got to mitigate those factors, but in the end, it comes down to a, a 2d6. Yeah. And that was, now that I think about it more after we've played it and sat here and discussed it, I liked that element. It was fun. Much better. I, I enjoyed that. It was fun. There also were some cool, there were uh, historical leaders that you could throw in the mix. Uh, Alexander had, and they named them. Yeah, I had Abrams and Dwight. Yeah, and I had uh, Schmettendorf. Schellendorf. Schellendorf. And Zeckendorf. Zeckendorf. So, kind of historical name commanders that you could throw into the battle that gave you a, a one or a two bonus. But they were at risk of being killed as part of the reductions if you really boogered it up. So, like that element. I also like the range attacks. I don't know that we've played a lot of war games that have allowed... At least, uh, at least if, it's, if it's areas like this, right. usually you just you move in, we do some attacks. Yeah. This one, you can choose. I can either move in and assault. Assault. Where lots of like the infantry are running in, they've got tank support. And that gives different combat results right. that could happen or you can choose to do a range attack where you just I'm standing on my hill and I'm shooting my tanks yeah. and that's different because you know only your armor gets affected to, to and it can be devastating it, it, it can affect your attack things, is bad. but it's primarily armor yeah, yeah. and, and it, that can go very poorly but what was neat and as, as easy as this was to learn and as simple as the mechanics are and I think anyone could pick this up there is a, some really cool crunchy bits. Oh, yeah. So, like, you can't do a range attack when there's fog. And you're like, yeah, of yeah. course you couldn't. Yeah. But the, the weather is tracked kind of by impulses. But, you know, by the time the day wears on, the fog burns off and it becomes overcast. And all of a sudden, all the tanks are shooting at each other. And yeah. It's awesome. Um, and if you get it to clear weather, the, the allied player gets air support. So they're getting inherent bonuses to attack and defend because they had air superiority at this point during the campaign. Mm -hmm. And there's like an air bombardment where you can bring in um, the, the P-38 Lightnings and you're just like, just 
anywhere on the map, I just put in that yeah. counter and I drop up five bombardment points, and you can add more to that if you need to, and and it's it can be devastating because you don't have any defensive values to get against mm. those. You just and if there's lots of units stacked, you know if, if there's more than five units in an area and you drop your bombardment on there. I get bonuses to my bombardment. Because you have more it's targets. To hit them. More yeah. targets, yeah. And so there's a lot of cool little neat bits. The leaders are really cool. You can add those yep. in as bonuses. I also really enjoy the impulse track itself. So what happens is, you, you can explain it better than I can, but you're making rolls based on your uh, your your combat die, right? Yeah, so so for the because the general player goes first in the impulse, right. and then the American Always. player goes... And whenever the American player, their first die roll on their turn, and that might be to do a defense a, a or an combat attack or, or something like that. So if I'm going to attack you, oh great, I do an attack, I rolled an eight. And that first die roll that I make in my turn is considered the sunset die roll. Yeah. And I consult the impulse track. Um, so I roll an eight. If we're on impulse, um, kind of. If, I guess if we would... If we're on impulse five... If we're on impulse five, nothing happens. You have to roll under yeah. that impulse. So you'd have to roll a four or less on 2d6. And then if you did that... If you did that, then it turns over. Yeah. It's immediately over. You can't do anything else. Yeah. It's done with, and you move on to the next game turn. So the allies are kind of almost trying to like blow through it. Yeah. Really low. So you can just defend and get the game over with almost. Right. So, so I like that element because one, that's a neat element. That, it's a neat way to handle that. Yeah, it's it also very simple. puts a lot of onus on the Germans to really get after it. Yeah, and, and and it's you know you only get one impulse, you only get one attack. So it's not like I can do five or six attacks, and then Alexander just does one or two moves. And so it's like I'm doing my impulse, I'm activating an area or shooting from an area. Then Alexander's going, and when he's rolling. He, he, he realistically, after turn two, could end the round every turn by rolling Snake Eyes. Yeah. Indeed. Now, you, you can't do that. No. But that put, once again, put a lot of stress and onus on that German player. Yeah, and I like that. You start getting to impulse seven and eight, and you're like... It's going to end soon. Yeah. Like, i got to try and yeah. eat this out. And it, what was fascinating, I think that that's a really cool design choice because as the Allied player, it's... It's not an independent die roll unless I do nothing on my turn. Which you, you can pass. Yeah, you can pass and then you just make a normal die roll. But if I do an attack, I'm like, all right, we've got some good combat odds. I'm going to make an attack. If that attack fails miserably, like I roll a two or a three, I'm going to take some pretty severe losses. If you attack and you lose, very bad, bad things happen to you, almost inevitably. Because you're, you're comparing your enemy's yeah. die roll. So if he rolled a 12 and you rolled a three... And the mod ended up being six or seven. You're taking six or seven yeah. attrition points. Or if it was a ranged attack, all of my armor gets reduced. Right. As, as the attacker. And it's just like straight up. It's Terrible. Awful. But, you know, the compensation for that is the turn's over at yeah. least, right? If so I roll any poorly. You got killed, but it's not going to last. It, yeah. We're I'm, moving I'm, on I'm to the next round. closer towards the yeah. end of the game. I might cling on and yeah. win. So that, I thought that was a really cool way of like... Yeah, you might get hosed, but the, at least you won't get hosed for like the entire game. Like right. the game will end right if you haven't got completely wiped off the board. So conversely, as the Germans, you're obviously always hoping to win the battle, but you don't want him to roll a two. Yeah, you, because it's going to end the round, and and that's that's a very interesting choice. Um, there are also the replacement points were kind of neat. You could flip over reduced units on the board. You can rebuild. Eliminated units. What was the other thing you could do? That was it. That was yeah, it. Those two. So those were kind of cool. You got three or four of those as the Americans. Three? Uh, yeah. The Americans get three. And I got and the one. Get one. Um, but there's the advantage marker, which can be used to Another gain point. an additional one. Or it can also be used for, kind of for a reroll or yeah. to change the weather if you need to. Things like that. So it's really important for the Germans to, to eliminate units. Attack a stack that you can make sure you inflict six or seven attrition loss points to try and kill a unit or two so he can't just turn that unit back over on the board. That was frustrating, and at one point I was like, yeah, finally I got that tank out of there. And literally the turn ended, you flipped that tank over to from its reduced side to its real side, and then brought another tank in that was reduced. And I'm like, okay, now I just, I got like two steps forward, three steps back, I felt <laughs> like. Um, so anyway... Those are really some neat, neat elements, I think. But yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll take a quick look at the board and kind of show you 
uh, the map and a few bits and pieces, and then we'll come back for some final thoughts. So here's a look uh, at the map. As you can see, it's, it's not a, a massive map. We've got a, pa got a paper map, and we'll get some plexiglass for it. Um, it's a really clear design. Um, the graphics are great, uh, especially with the counters. Really enjoyed. All the numbers are really big, very obvious what it is. I'm not straining my eyes, and the counters are a good size. They're both manageable, um, kind of stacking-wise, but they're not too big, not too small, so that's great. Um, but the map itself is divided up into these regions, these little areas. They're kind of divided by either these white dotted lines or the hard blue kind of rivers or the canal down here as well. Um, each region has these numbered boxes. A circle region is kind of a, I think it's open terrain, and I think the squares are kind of a rough terrain like that. Um, and as you can see, this has a plus one modifier to it. This has a plus three modifier to it. Um, and the, the, the other numbers on top, like this is region number 15, simply just the number of the region. Um, kind of the red ones start under German control, and the blue ones here, um, I think those are to do, there's kind of blue ones and green ones to, to do with, um, I'm not actually sure, we'd never paid attention to that, frankly. Um, but basically the Germans kind of start stacked up here, and they're trying to push forward, and they're trying to take all of these spaces, the areas they have the 1VP, 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 2VPs down here. They're trying to just take all of those and they'll get VPs. If they get 10 victory points, they win the game. Very simple from a kind of understanding of what you're trying to do in the game. Um, the Germans can achieve an automatic victory and that's by controlling space 7 or space 25. And with e either one of those, doesn't have to be both, they have to be able to trace a supply line that goes through area eight. So if you control seven, eight, and then have a line of supply all the way out, the Germans immediately win. Um, same if they control 25 and can trace supply down and then back out, then they immediately win. Now, that's very challenging to do, but that's kind of the other thing that they can go for. Instead of trying to get all the VPs and hang on for four turns whilst the Americans counterattack with reinforcements, um, if they can kind of blitz all the way through, and take this spot and this spot, it's over, because they're basically cutting off reinforcements and supplies, they, they take a uh, victory for the day. So that's what they're, they're kind of aiming for. The allies here are just kind of hanging on for dear life, waiting for the reinforcements to come in and doing a counter push so they can protect all of the, you know, enough of the VPs where the, the Germans can't win. Um, the forces arrayed in this aren't particularly massive. I think you start with maybe 15 or 20 counters on the board, if that, and reinforcements anywhere from like, I think the Americans get like eight or nine and the, the Germans get kind of uh, 10, 15, something like that. So you, you know, you end up with some stacks, but really these are all the units right here. And we had a lot of dead ones that you can see in the eliminated box, but it's not a ton of counters, not making a big mess. Uh, so very easy to manage. And the areas are big enough where you can almost just kind of lay them out um, so you can kind of see everything. So you know exactly what's there. Again, no hidden information. But uh, th there's a turn track. Game is four turns long. Each turn is made up of impulses, which are marked on this track, um, which is also kind of the weather track. The impulse token, if you kind of look here, the impulse token starts with fog on it, which obviously won't come into focus. That's just my luck. Fantastic. But either way, it says fog on it, and then it has an overcast side. And then there is another one, which is the kind of clear weather one here. But basically you have fog in the morning, and then throughout the day it's possible for the weather to change. And halfway through the day, if the fog hasn't burnt off into overcast, it always will. And, you know, each, each impulse, the German player does something, and then the American player does something. And then you go back and forth. And like we said, uh, any time the American player does their first die roll of a turn, you kind of compare that. So here I rolled a seven. If it was on, if we were on impulse eight, this is less than eight, the turn immediately ends. You just predict, go to the next turn. Um, what happens then is you just start again. This goes back to one and you just do a whole nother day. Um, if you ever roll equal to the current impulse, so I rolled a four, we're on four, the game continues, but the weather changes. And then you just change the weather based on what it says in the rules. So you can get 
You can get out of the fog and into clear weather much earlier if you have some good rolls. And the Americans want to get that clear weather out because then they can bring out their kind of air, their air bombardments here and they get bonus air support points for all of the combats for the rest of the day. So they're definitely trying to get the, the weather clear, which there's nothing you can do to influence that. It's purely a die roll, but you definitely want to try. Um, the only other thing you could do is there's this advantage marker, which is yeah, almost like a wild card. The allies can use it to improve the weather. Um, it can also be used for a dice re-roll as well one time. And this goes back and forth between Axis and Allied Advantage. You know, the allies use it up, the next turn the, the Axis have it, and back and forth like that. So you get some back and forth uh, with that, which is fun. But the reality is, is it's your impulse. You declare you're either going to do an assault, you're going to do a ranged combat, you're going to kind of do a regroup, which is just moving guys around in the back, so to speak or you can kind of pass, um, or the allies can do bombardments. Um, in the first scenario, only the allies have bombardments. I think in the second scenario, the Germans have artillery and they can do it too. Uh, but assaulting is, so anytime you have an impulse, you just choose an area, it's called area impulse, this area activates. So everyone in this deck, they're gonna do an assault impulse. So they can move their movement factors, which is five, um, so you can either move you know, empty spaces or just kind of one, one, two, three, that's totally fine. Um, if you move into an area that is adjacent to, to enemy units, that costs you, I think, two move, movement factors. If you move into an area that contains only reduced enemy units, that costs you, I think, three movement factors, I want to say. And then if you move into an area with only um, full strength, it's like four movement factors, which is pretty much all your movement factors, basically. Um, so that's movement. Movement's very simple. You don't really have to look at the terrain so much as you're looking at where the enemy is in relation to you. And that gives you a little bit of a different way to go about thinking, which I thought was really cool. Um, the only thing that really mattered was if you cross rivers like this here, where there's no bridge, Tanks on armor can't make that crossing. Infantry can, but it costs all their movement. And then when you move across bridges, only five units can cross a bridge in a movement. But the reality is, is you don't run into that very often in this particular game. You just something to be aware of. When you assault, you do a mandatory combat, which is, let's flip these over and we'll just do it. You pick a lead unit, so these are all if you kind of take a look, they've got three values here. And those values. So that you've got a, this is an attack value of a four, a defense value of a five, and movement factors of a five. So I pick a lead one, and these are all the same, so it doesn't really matter to me. So I do a four as my lead unit, so I'll just set them aside. Let's see, we're attacking these guys. And they pick a lead defend unit. Well, wow. we're going to defend with the guy with the seven. And then you add some, some modifiers. So the attacker adds plus one for every full strength unit they're attacking with that isn't the lead unit. So they're going to add four. And they're going to throw in, they're going to throw in their HQ leader as well. So I've got a four plus another four is an eight plus one is a nine. So I'm attacking with a nine strength. The defensive value here of the tank is a seven, plus one from the terrain is an eight, and then male. That's just it. We'll just do. We'll just do that. Um, they have the option to throw in a leader. If it was clear weather, they could get some air support, but they're not going to do it. And then you just roll a d6. The German adds a six to their total, and the American adds a nine to their total. So the the, the Americans kind of have a have an edge there. And it's the difference between the two total rolls kind of determines what happens. And, and basically when, uh, when, the, when, the, when you attack, when you do an assault or a fire combat, when you're, when you're attacking and you fail, basically, it's very, very, very bad. If you kind of consult the rules, you know, typically your lead unit gets reduced anyway, even if you win, just because attritional losses. Uh, but we had seven, eight, eight and nine. You're looking at 17, and we had here 5, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. We had 9 plus 6 is a 15. So 
you got yourself a, a difference there of about let's see three or four and then you just consult and this is where I wish there was a small player aid but there isn't you kind of look back and forth here in the rules it says you have to take uh, you take attritional points and those are taken from here so each full strength unit uh, is, elim is eliminated costs three attrition points so you can if you've got if you have to take three attrition points you know you can just remove a full strength unit call it good um, or you can take retreats or reductions with differing values there but basically um, here you've got kind of stalemate repulse success over on this was a repulse because the attacking was less than the defensive value and basically there's no effect to the defenders units and all the attacking units are flipped to their reduced strength side um, and, and then they have to go back where they came from so as great as I thought that attack was all of these German units are reduced and they sit back where they were awful terrible terrible outcome to the attack because now they're really weak and I'm going to counterattack and kind of destroy those the next turn. And that's assaulting. And ranged combat's very similar, except you don't move in. And you basically use only armor. So I've got a stack of armor here. They're going to shoot them. All of my armor. So I've got like a four plus one for all my armor. And I shoot at range. Again, can't do it when it's foggy because you can't see them. And, and, and it's a very similar outcome. Um, if you fail, you flip all your armor units. Um, if you succeed, you only flip the lead unit. Because again, any time you attack with anything, the lead unit will almost always flip, even in a success, just because you take some losses, and then the enemy's going to have to take attritional losses first on their armor and then on other units, because it's fire combat, that's just how it is. So you might end up retreating some guys, flipping some guys. But that's really what it is. The combat is not complex. It's just about managing your totals and kind of putting everything together. And, and that's just it. In an area impulse game, you're just trying to move into areas, do combats, get guys out, and, and just take over areas. It's very simple in its nature, but it's very easy to learn. Um, honestly, th there's not much else to the game. There's some extra bridges, which we'll talk about here just in just a second, but those are kind of additional rules that you can add to, to put in engineers and sappers to blow bridges and things like that. So what we'll do is we'll just wrap up with some final thoughts here. So that was a look at the map uh, and a few of the mechanics there. Uh, I think the things that we didn't talk about quite as much were there's there's some optional rules in this. Um, so you can have your engineers kind of destroy bridges to kind of cut um, supply lines. And supply lines. You can rebuild the bridges. There's a lot of extra bits and pieces you can do with that to make the game a bit more strategic, a bit more involved mm -hmm. in that way. And there is the second scenario which we didn't play. Um, but for me, this was it was a fun game. Wasn't overly complex. It was really easy. The rules are fairly simple to understand. Uh, a lot of if you played war games, this is very intuitive. I felt. Yeah. Um, now you might have to get used to the way that the game plays because I did feel like I d I don't know if I would say it's not realistic, but there were certain times where you're just like I'm just making a big stack of ten guys so I can make yeah. a big attack. Yeah. Which there's there were fewer fewer battle lines and I feel like in a lot of war games you're like I gotta keep my battle lines together because yeah. I don't want to get outflanked and this one you're just like sod it stick them together make a huge attack in and, one place and that's kind of stomp around the board a bit and I think that's a condition of the area movement yeah. it's an area game versus a hex game so it that's why we built up big stacks if we had hexes this would have represented two or three hexes yeah. I would have been unable to concentrate so yeah that was an element I also Struggled with a little bit, and that's just—it mm -hmm. was just different from what we right. used to. I think. I, I think it's 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 a good mechanic. I just think it's different than what we've typically played. The the one thing that I didn't like about the game, and and I feel like I'm stretching a little bit, the terrain modifiers were very interesting. Like for instance, a hill offered a plus three modifier on assault attacks, but it offered a greater benefit against ranged. Yeah. tank attacks and I was trying to struggle with that in my mind um, and I still don't know that I have a great idea of what my concerns are but it felt parts of that felt like it, it could have been a little different that there could have been some tweaks to it that would have made that I don't know if more realistic is a word but I, I, I don't know hills when I'm on top of a hill shooting typically we don't care what the other hill is like you know what I'm saying I still have the vantage 
And that was something I don't know that I just, once again, I just, that's something I want to think about. Yeah. And better understand. The thing I uh, wish this game had was um, a, a better player aid reference. Yeah. The game, the board, you know, the board itself, the map is great. Um, but just give me a small printed chart out here. Because yeah. this is a great sequence of play and everything. Yeah, which is good. But there's the... I want the attritional stuff and the combat well, combat modifier. Uh, combat would be better. I Put me the combat stuff right here so I can refer Just to it Just have to quickly. keep looking at the rules. Yeah. That's all. And that's purely a convenience thing. It's yeah. the only thing I would have wanted extra. I would have also liked to have seen some track on the board that... So I'm an 11. My base is an 11. It reminds me of combat yes. commander. Yes. I'm an 11. I put a marker here. Then I roll my die... So I know I've got to add 11 to 8 that I rolled. Yeah. That was something we we finally resorted to pen and pencil or paper. Because the numbers get quite high. Yeah, you're, you're 21. My, and it just, it was something I felt like could have very easily been put on the board. Because And you can't just, you're not, it's not just like, oh, I won. How much you won by yeah. is important. So you do right. have to be quite precise with this. You want to keep going back and counting. Having a little track of that would have been nice. But, right. Uh, you know, there's only so much you can put on a map this small, yeah, and I yeah. get it. Um, so this came out from Revolution Games recently. Um, I had a blast playing this, uh, and now too. I'm going to crack out the other one and do that solo. Yeah, and in fact, I, I want to take this home and do the other scenario solo. And I'll probably even crack this one back out because I want to see if I could have done things differently yeah. to change the results. Yeah. Because early on, we did a couple things that I think were suboptimal. Yeah, I totally blew all my artillery, right. and I attacked... I did an assault with a tank who was reduced. I was like, why did I do that? Yeah, why? Because the lead element the always takes yeah. a reduction. And I'm yeah. like, this was the dumbest thing I've ever So done. there were some things that I think had I done, I'd like to do this solo. And this is a prime solo game. Yeah, no hidden no information. No hidden inf information. And really, the Americans are, frankly, just defending. I, I mean, there's very few counterattacks. There are some. Yeah, once they get the reinforcements on, it then is, they can. But you don't need to counterattack much. No. You two or just three need times. To prevent. The Germans from having every VP space. So yeah. you could just sit on one and be like, come at me. Yeah. You could really do that. So I want to try that solo. I think this will play out very well. So Yeah, but I had a fun time playing this. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I think a lot of, almost anyone who's played a war game could play this up, pick it up, uh, play yep. it very easily. It's very reasonably Agreed. priced. Um, I had a blast playing this. Um, overall, I would highly recommend this. And even for, for newer war gamers, definitely this is a great jumping off point. Mm -hmm. I mean, the rules are well written. And they're simple, but, you know, you, you, I still learn a lot. Maybe I would like to see a little bit more. Now I'm going to have to go and research this particular battle. Right, I don't like, know that there's I... There's a small paragraph about what happened, but right. I'm like, well, I, I want to go and find... I was like, on Wikipedia, like, what actually happened? Yeah, and they were right. like, they were like, the Americans, with greater strategy and tactics and equipment, they counterattacked and, like, won the battle. And I was... At that point of the game, I had, like, two counters on the board. And right. I was like, how did this happen? <laughs> I literally I got it done. Literally got it down to where he only had two counters on the board. And but yeah, just but like then that, he got like twelve units. Went bang, yeah, and, and it, I smashed back in, and there it was. Yeah, so, uh, so fascinating. But well, one other comment I want to make is I don't want you to think that this game is oversimplified. It because it's not. We keep saying it's introductory, it's clear, it's fairly easy under, to understand. I think more hardened war gamers are still going to get some some benefit out of this game. So understand that, keep that in mind. I, I, I thought this was fun. Yeah, I had a great time I playing this. Fun. So I appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you like what you see, feel free to like and subscribe. And you can see more of uh, all of our reviews and videos over at theplayersaid.com. And I've been Alexander. And I'm Grant.